Winter Cut Day 48. How are you guys doing today? You doing good? Good to hear. Anyway, we're going to make ourselves, well, I'm going to make myself a coffee, whey protein shake, creatine, a liquid IV, which is not present right now. I got to go get that, and a multivitamin. So, when I snap my fingers, you're going to see all of this made. All right. That didn't work. Ugh. So today is back bicep and forearm day. And I'm going to try to, I don't even know, just do well. Enjoy it. I want to try to go for a PR on everything if possible. That's how I usually am. And I think that's how I've best maintained during this cut. And anybody who's gone through a cut before knows that maintaining should be your main goal on a cut after you know the deficit has been acquired so just make sure you're maintaining and um dude like if your strength is going down like insanely during even like the first half of a cut I don't know I just feel like that's not right I feel like a lot of people can maintain without all the body fat now if it's a body weight driven movement if we're talking about like a bench press or something like that then yeah like that's fine if that drops because that's literally like a one-to-one -one correlation with your body weight but pretty much most other things shouldn't be dropping I don't know I mean in, at least in my training that's how it happened I mean the bench press was the only lift that really went down. Every other lift went up or maintained. So, uh, hack squats went up, Smith machine, incline press went up. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say it went up, but it's, I am stronger at it now a little bit than I used to be, so. Yeah, my number one tip to, be, to maintain your strength on a cut or get stronger would be have an early training age. So if you are, if you have been training for like five years or more, chances are, and this isn't a guarantee by the way, but chances are if you've actually been seriously training and dieting properly, you know, bulking, cutting, getting your sleep in for five years, having an intelligent training program, progressively overloading, chances are when you cut, you're going to lose a good amount of strength. But for me, I'm lucky because, yes, I've been training for a long time, but I have only started to really genuinely progress over the past, like, two years. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I'm able to get away with gaining strength on the cut, not because of something magic I'm pulling, like some magical exercise routine or diet. Like, guys, I'm, I'm basically doing chicken only, and... I'm hitting PRs, you know what I mean? So, and there's a couple other factors too, like I just started creatine. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit tired, but you guys get what I mean. 12 ounces strong in the joint mug. And we have our liquid IV with creatine ready. We got our multivitamin. We're going to slam this down in three, two, one. I want to address something. For people who, and I don't, I don't care about comments. I'm going to start that. I'm just going to start by saying that. But uh, when people just consistently say, oh, bro, you're copying Sam Sulek. Man, tell that to Rich Piana. Look at who Sam Sulek looked up to. And actually also tell that to Ronnie Coleman. And pretty much every well-known bodybuilder. They weren't well-known just because they competed. They were actually well-known because they had a ton of footage of everything they did in their daily life all the time. They did vlogs before vlog YouTubers were even a thing. They literally made these videos before Sam Sulek was even a thought. So... My point is, I'm totally cool with people comparing me or whatever or making a comment, but 
it's so obvious that I'm making videos of what I do on my daily basis having nothing to do with the guy. And um, I don't know, you just have to be pretty silly to think that I'm just like copying somebody. So I don't know. It just doesn't make sense, bro. But uh, also I noticed a lot of the people who comment that they aren't actually like experienced lifters. Like if they were experienced lifters, I, I might even think about it like twice maybe. But the fact that these people, like the only, if you ask them like, oh, who's Mr. Olympia? They'd probably say Sam Sulek, which proves they're not that smart. So just a little, just a little side tangent for you guys. But all that to say, we got coffee in the joy mug yet again. I'm saying it. And we got this protein shake we got to make. Creatine. One thing that's funny that I notice is that if I ever promote my product, nobody uses my code. But whenever I stop promoting my products, a bunch of people use my code. So, anyway, guys, use code. And also, you know, I never mentioned this. Uh, I have a bunch of different links in my link tree where I just kind of have links to products that I literally use in my training. So like things that have helped me and, and they're not, uh, what's it called? They're not super well known, all of them. Like I had to just kind of find random products that work for me. And so like Nordic Lifting has really good weightlifting shoes. They have a 1.4 inch heel elevation. It's the highest out of any lifting shoe that I've seen. And dude, I can squat super deep because I have those shoes. So those are, you know, in my link tree. My uh, belt that I use for, you know, plates, to attach plates to my waist, that's from Spud Inc. I enjoy it. I saw, I saw Alex Leonidas using it for chin-ups a while back, and I just thought it was cool. So I was like, that must be good, because this is the calisthenics guy that I'm watching, you know, and he must know a thing or two about uh, weighted belts. So, all right, boys, we're going to chug this coffee in a little bit because I'm going to wait for it to cool down. Uh, chug this protein shake right now. And, uh, yeah, then I will, yeah, I'll see you guys at the gym for, I think chin-ups will be the first, no, bicep curls will be the first thing I'm doing. All right. Yeah, bro, you gotta put up in sport mode. something I kind of lost count I'm gonna switch to the right arm and I'll, I'll tell you guys sometimes it can feel a little weird on your joints <sighs> especially uh, you know after a while on the cut I noticed that uh, I just feel a little more sensitive than I was when I was balked and when I was balked I felt like I was a little bit more invincible but on the cut now I'm starting to feel a little bit like even if I'm moving good numbers still for me. I feel like I'm moving them without as much relative ease. So. If I did these reps like Jay Cutler, I'd go like this. Cause he does that bounce at the bottom of like every single thing. Like 
literally every exercise he does the same like bounce. <laughs> I wondered if there was like some kind of science to that or if but now I'm just starting to realize that it's literally just because he was training close to failure. It didn't really matter how he was doing it. Same goes for pretty much most training methods, if not all of them. So guys, I'd like you to meet my newborn baby. Uh, she was actually born yesterday. She weighs 45 pounds and she has a, uh, you know, a genetic thing where she's just made out of steel, kind of dumbbell shape. But yeah, I'm thinking this is, uh, you know, this is kind of what I expected, you know, after, uh, you know, me and her mother, Barbella. <laughs> All right. 45 on the left. Three, two, one. <laughs> yes! Decent amount of reps. I like that. That went well. But, I mean, honestly, guys, nothing. There, there are a few things better feeling in the gym, ah, in terms of a bicep exercise, than preacher curls. To be honest, I think preacher curls are probably they gave you the best feeling. Whether you debate whether they're the best or not, or how effective they are, they give you the best feeling, best mind muscle connection, the best stretch. And uh, I mean, if you want to, you can get a good contraction too. It's just, there's not really much tension up here. So there's like basically zero. So that contraction you're feeling isn't really that useful. <coughs> but still, you know, I, guys, I actually have adjustable dumbbells. And uh, so if in the future, I'm like, all right, I can't do 55, but I can do 50. I could just make myself a 50. So, but then again, though, the plates would have to be small enough that I could get a decent range of motion, which I don't think would be that bad because I usually just go about to here anyway. Or sometimes, like, here, I feel like, for the most part. I don't go all the way down because there's, like, I could benefit from that, I'm sure, and that could make me more, like, injury resilient, but I would... I would have to like drop the side of the dumbbell off the bench to get that extra ROM, so I don't think that'd be worth it to me. I can't wait for uh, my throat to return to normal so I could 
grunt at full volume and go bear mode. Well, they didn't teach me either. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just wanted. I just wanted to be stupid. To be honest, I'm used to you always looking really beat up, so yeah, that's probably it, it's <laughs> one so of the many things. I think I'm looking more dry, honestly. Like, I feel like my physique before looked pretty watery by comparison, but now I am starting to get a bit leaner. Crossfitters made though, where it's like it's like an iron rod that comes out like this, and they throw 45 pound plates on it. Oh!
So we got 45, five there. What I like to do is, not for everything, it just depends, but a 25% weight reduction if I have got five reps to failure on an exercise. So I just got five reps to failure there. And now I'm going to do a 25% weight reduction, which would literally end up mathing out to what I weigh. So 20 inch arms incoming. Let's go. I can feel it. 20 inch arms will happen. Boys, I'm thinking, right? Yes, are my arms pretty big, proportional to the rest of my physique? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm gonna be honest, I've always just wanted humongous arms. So, and not only, you know, humongous arms. Obviously, humongous everything else too, but specifically arms. So, you know, if my goal is 20 inches and it makes me look disproportionate or whatever, I really don't care. I just want huge arms. So, yeah, I mean, people always joke about, it. like in my comments, like, oh, bro, bro only does arm day or something like that. And I'm like, you know, I will say for since the beginning of my lifting journey and just any kind of exercise, I have always just hard focused on uh, wanting big arms. Now, my training wasn't always oriented towards that, but that's what I did. So, my, at least my focus was there, even if I put curls last, but now I'm putting them first. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, boys, I think I found a new form. So, ugh, the grip on that never felt good on my shoulder until I realized I could loosen my pinkies and the fingers down the line and increase my bum tightness. And it can kind of make it to where instead of my shoulder angle being straight on, I can tilt it over and still have a good grip. So, very, very nice. Glad I discovered that. I'm actually gonna thank God for that idea. Because I pray before most of my training sessions. And uh, I know he helps me out, gives me ideas and stuff, and gives me the strength to go on. We're about to do chest supported dumbbell rows. I'm very excited. I think it's gonna go well. 85, no, is that 85? I don't even know, dude, it's, it's an 80. Or I feel like every workout is a struggle. Like every workout feels like a struggle. So, I, um, dude, I just feel so depleted. And, uh, dude, like, I'm, listen, when you get on chicken only for like, a few weeks, you, you guys, don't do this, don't do the chicken only, but I'm just saying, if you do it like me, you would be depleted. So, definitely uh, working though, in terms of the leanness and muscle mass retention, I mean, the strength is still there. I just feel like, like actually getting the work done is just so difficult in the gym. It's just, I, I don't have the same energy that I did whenever I was eating more makes me miss the bulk workouts, man. You'd, I mean, not only did I have the energy, but I felt like more passionate, you know, other than yesterday's chest day. Yesterday's chest day went better, I think, because I had like 20 grams of carbohydrates before, but today I only had 10. And keep in mind, guys, this is coming from the liquid IV drink. So those are the only carbs that I'm getting. At least the only carbs that I know of. Who knows, the whey protein isolate might have more or whatever. Push. 
Shush! fantastic i will see you guys probably at home later or something all right all right boys so uh my brother just gave me a ps and i'm pretty excited i mean i don't sound that excited because my my voice is kind of gone but i very 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 ecstatic when he gave it to me so thank you brother jordan also uh we have, I'm going to set that up in a little bit, but, boys, we're going to play so many good games on there. Spider-Man, freaking God of War. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're also going to eat some, and I've already been eating it. And then I was like, you know what, I kind of should record right now. I was getting all the Kinder seasonings on it. You know how I like Kinder, right? All of the Kinder seasonings. All of the Kinder seasonings. I think I have one, two, three, four, five. So, definitely enjoying that. And, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the chest day. And I uh, hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day. You gotta, I don't know, do something about this hair right now. It's all nappy looking. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will see you for leg day and I think Thursday. So, two days you'll be waiting. All right, take care.